Army Tower, Owl 015, aircraft 15 miles south, flight level 150, inbound from landing runway 250, over. Owl 01, Homey Tower, report downwind to runway 25. What'd you get from me this time? Probably your favorite airplane from the Sonic franchise. Wait, didn't I already make a video on that? Like, wasn't that one of my first videos on this channel? Confirm, but since it's Sonic Month, we thought it'd be a great chance for you to update your videos a bit, brush them off, make them all shiny and stuff. Good point. I do aspire to be considered an authoritative source on such things. So, good point, good point. Anyway, see you on the ground, I guess. Hello all, and welcome to another episode of Hangar 412, the show that gives you the rundown on all the lore and technology behind some of our favorite vehicles in fiction. And in this episode, we'll explore the lore behind the primary fighter aircraft used by the Guardian Units of Nations Worldwide Military and Law Enforcement Organization, the Blue Eagle from the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. One of the saddest lessons of history is this We've been bamboozled long enough We tend to reject any evidence of the bamboozled We're all interested in finding out the truth The bamboozled has captured us The Blue Eagle is a carrier-capable ground attack and multi-role fighter developed and produced in mass by the Guardian Units of Nations, or GUN for short, upon request from the Office of the President of the United Federation to combat Dr. Ivo Eggman Robotnik's private mechanized military. Based on documents that Dr. Ivo Robotnik hacked out of computers located at GUN's research facility in the desert, it appears Gunn used Dr. Gerald Robotnik's research from 50 years ago in the aircraft's design, presumably around things like using the chaos drive as a potential power source, propulsion source, and maybe using its mystical powers to give the aircraft its distinctive VTOL capabilities. As it appears there are no conventional thrusters to give it those VTOL capabilities like you would see on something like the AV-8 Harrier or the F-35, for example. It's also interesting to note that the Blue Eagle doesn't feature traditional rolling landing gear. Rather, the fighter uses feet in place of traditional wheels. This means the fighter can't actually roll across the ground to take off like a conventional aircraft. It can only take off vertically, like the X-Wing from Star Wars. This is presumably why aircraft carriers operated by the Guardian Units of Nations don't have carrier catapults like carriers operated by the Chinese Navy, US Navy, Russian Navy, or British Navy do, as there would actually be no purpose for them. That's because if you were to hook up this aircraft to a traditional aircraft carrier catapult, because it has no wheels, it would just either destroy the landing gear and or destroy the surface of the flight deck along with the catapult most likely. So it actually makes sense that they would just have a small little runway or platform for these VTOL only capable aircraft to take off from. Just point the aircraft carrier flight deck into the oncoming wind and allow that to assist in the aircraft's vertical takeoff and landing capabilities. I actually had this whole thing in the script trying to figure out what these yellow things were because I always thought they were pushback tugs. They even have the little notch in the back to imply that, but after I extracted them from the game I realized that the plane doesn't quite fit properly and A, those are completely automated and I'm not quite familiar if there's completely automatic pushback tugs in wide use today. I don't think so, most of them are operated by somebody. but. That said, it occurred to me, well, since they can't push and pull these aircraft across the flight deck, what could these things be for? And maybe they're supposed to be weapon carts? That's my best guess. And on the topic of weapons, and the fighter can be equipped with an unknown number of unguided bombs. Though in game, it's shown to be one, maybe two, but that cannot possibly be right. That would be extremely inefficient and wasteful. So, my best guess is this texture here, which looks like an internal weapons bay, can probably hold more than that. 
As for other armaments, the aircraft can also be equipped with two semi-automatic machine guns located on either side of the cockpit just behind the windscreen. Though it seems newer models replace these with pulse lasers and four external hardpoints under the wings. Now it's unclear if this new boxier pulse laser variant is meant to serve alongside the original Blue Eagle while it stays in service or if it's meant to replace the original outright. Now, it's quite evident in the original Blue Eagle's design that it was definitely intended specifically as a ground attack aircraft as opposed to an air dominance fighter, as the windscreen is only on the front of the cockpit as opposed to a bubble canopy that maximizes visibility and reduces blind spots by being on top of the cockpit and giving you 360 degree visibility. In fact, that's the whole point behind Ace Combat's coffin system and the real-world helmets employed in the F-35, as they essentially turn the plane invisible around you, giving you 360-degree visibility as if you're in, like, Wonder Woman's invisible jet. That way, you're less likely to lose track of your adversary in a dogfight. And it seems that both versions of the Blue Eagle share this mainly forward-facing windscreen, indicating they were both designed primarily as ground attack aircraft, where you're not going to be really concerned with getting in a dogfight and having the enemy behind you, per se. I mean, these are still things to worry about, but you're not going to be necessarily specifically focused on getting into a dogfight. Something else I've noticed is both versions of the Blue Eagle seem to have slats in front of the turbines recessed in the forward air intakes. These would seemingly fulfill the dual purpose of regulating the speed and amount of air incoming into the engines to optimize performance at a wide range of speeds and altitudes, while also minimizing radar returns reflected off of the engine turbines themselves. A similar method of shielding the turbines from radar was employed on the F-160 Raiju in GTA and the real-world F-117A Nighthawk using a mesh screen in front of the air intakes. Now I know they had to do this due to hardware limitations, but if you look at the original Blue Eagle from the Sonic Adventure 2, it is very angular, which is a uh, common trope of early stealth designs to help scatter radar waves. So I like to imagine with the knowledge that it has those intake slats, that the craft might have some low-level stealth capabilities. Just a fun thought. So, in my last video, I mentioned that my whole life I had it in my head for some reason that the Sonic Adventure 2 original Blue Eagle was based off of the SU-33 or SU-27, not the SU-34, which I know that sounds really nerdy and they don't sound that different, but they are incredibly different. Look them up. I know this is very nerdy, but hear me out. The Blue Eagle just never registered as what it was meant to be for some reason in my head. Because I guess mainly the SU-34 fullback has more of a pronounced like hump or neck. Really making it look more like a duck or goose. Where the Blue Eagle is in every way... And SU-34, just sleeker, doesn't have as much of a pronounced hump. And so I guess for that reason, in my mind, I always just had it just locked away in my head cannon that it was supposed to be like an SU-33 or something. But no, it is definitely supposed to be an SU-34 with vertical takeoff and landing capabilities. So there's that. And on top of that, the new one, apparently at least the one from Sonic Generations, looks a lot like, I'd say, the F-15. So the Blue Eagle title actually fits quite well, considering the F-15's name is the Eagle. Well, with all that rambling out of the way, prepare for just a little bit more. I hope you all enjoyed this quick little breakdown into this obscure little aircraft from the Sonic franchise as much as I did making it. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, comment, and homing attack into that subscribe and bell icon for more obscure lore from across the multiverse, just like this.
But nearly all the manufacturing industries have slipped away of the countries. When awesome technological powers are in the hands of a very few, and no one representing the public interest can even grasp the issues. When the people have lost the ability to send their own agendas or knowledge to be questioned, those in authority. We're clutching our crystals and nervously consulting our horoscopes. Our critical faculties in decline, unable to distinguish between what feels good and what's true. We slide, almost without noticing, back into superstition and darkness. The darkness we influential media. The 30 second sound bites. Down to 10 cents on the last. Most common denominator of programming Credulous persons on pseudo-science and superstition Are especially a kind of self-ignorance